This is a lesson on pedigree charts. Okay, this is a pedigree chart, and let me explain to you how it works. You can see that we have circles and we have squares. The circles are going to indicate females, and the squares are going to represent males. You can also see that some of the circles are shaded in, and some of the circles are not. We also have uh, like our example at the top, where we have a circle and square, number one and two, they're going to be married. And that's what this line in between represents. So this married couple, number one and number two, this branch underneath it is going to show you that they've had child number four, child number five, and child number seven. Child number four married boy number three, and they had one child who's number nine and he is shaded in. And then we have child five married person six. They had two children, two girls who are 10 and 11. And then we have boy number seven married girl number eight and they had a girl number 12. Now the reason for the shaded in areas are because this is going to help us understand how we follow a trait through a family. And if we look at the top of this sheet, it's going to um, give us the information that we need to know. And it's telling us that we're going to be following colorblindness through a family. And if you remember, colorblindness is sex linked. Colorblindness is also recessive. So what that means for us is that every shaded in area is representing a person that is colorblind. So when we look right here, we see that number six is colorblind. We also see that number 10 and number nine are also colorblind. Our task is to determine what the genotype is for each individual on the pedigree chart. So because this is sex linked, it does matter whether the individual is male or female when we talk about genotype. So the first thing that we could do is go through and say that, um, you know, every male is XY and every female is XX. And we could, um, you know, continue doing that. Now from there, uh, we need to determine whether each individual is uh, normal or affected. So let's figure out what all of our genotype possibilities could be. If we were a normal female, let's say that we would have a capital N, a capital N for each X. Um, we could also be a female that could have a capital N for normal and a lowercase n for carrying colorblindness, but the two are going to be normal females. The only way for a female to be colorblind would be to have two X's and two lowercase recessive alleles. This would be the only colorblind female phenotype. And so if you look at the pedigree chart, number 10 is a female that is shaded in, which would indicate that she was a colorblind female. So number 10's genotype must be X little n, X little n. Now, if we look at the males, we could say that um, males only have two options. They only have one X, so their X is either going to be dominant normal or recessive color blindness. So if we look at number nine and number six, we can see that these two are shaded in, which means they would have color blindness. So they would be X little n y, and this would be X little n y. Now it's easy figuring out what these are. The hard part is figuring out what the people are that are not shaded in. And here's where we really have to think because you have to determine whether or not the individuals could possibly be carriers. Well, the only carriers in sex linked 
would have to be the females. The females genotypes would have to be either um, X dominant dominant or we'd have to have um, XX recessive recessive or we could have XX dominant recessive. This is our only carriers. So our job is to figure out which ones would be carriers and which one would not. So let's start at the bottom here. We know that person number nine is colorblind, but their mother and father are not colorblind and neither are their grandparents. So how did number nine become colorblind? Well, we know that it can't be the father because the father has to be normal. So it must be the mother, which makes the mother a carrier. And so she would be X big N, X little n. How did she get this recessive allele for colorblindness? Well, she would have to have gotten it from her mother because her father was normal. So the mother would also have to be a carrier. What I want you to do now is move to the bottom of your paper and on the lines write down the genotypes for each individual on the pedigree chart. Now we've already done person number one and number two. So we can write them on the lines. They would be X big N Y, and person number two would be X big N, X little n, because we determined that the mother was a carrier. At this point, pause the video and finish writing out all the genotypes. And when you're done, turn the video back on and I'll show you the results and you can see if you've got them all correct or not. Okay, are you ready to see the answers? Okay, here they are. Pause the video if you need to. Notice that number 8 and number 12, uh, you can write the unknown genotypes either way. Okay, this is the next pedigree chart. And this one is a little bit different because this one is going to follow dimples through a family. Now, dimples is autosomal dominant, which means it's not sex linked, so no X's and Y's. The gender of the individual does not matter, so each individual will receive two alleles, and if we use D's for dimples, we could say each individual could be homozygous dominant, heterozygous, or homozygous recessive. So our task is going to be to determine what genotype all these individuals are. Now, because it says it's following dimples through the family, that means that everything shaded in is an individual that has dimples. If that's the case, each one of these people are going to have at least one dominant gene. Your job is to see if you can figure out what the second gene is. Sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. So give it a try, see what you can do, pause the video, and I'll put the answers up and you can see if you get them right. But I'll give you a little clue. All of the non-shaded in ones must be homozygous recessive. Good luck. Okay, you ready for the answers? All right, here goes. Pause the video if you need to so that you can check your work. Okay, here's the third kind of pedigree chart, and this one says that we are going to follow attached ears through a family. And it says it's autosomal recessive, which means, again, it's not sex linked, no X's and Y's, gender does not matter, but this time all of the shaded in areas are going to be attached ears, which is recessive. Okay, so let's look at what we could have here if we're going to use E's for ears. Um, we could have autosomal dominant for um, regular lobed ears. 
or you could have a heterozygous condition for also um, regular earlobes or the homozygous recessive for attached earlobes. And this is what all of the shaded in areas would be. Now you might say, how did number five get attached earlobes if mom and dad, one and two, don't have attached earlobes? Well, if they each would be carriers, as I've written on the lines down here, that would tell you that one and two had to be carriers, there would be heterozygous, and they each gave number five one of their recessive alleles. See if you can try to figure out what the rest of the genotypes are. So pause the video now and then I'll show you the answers when you're finished. Are you ready for the answers? Get ready. I'm going to show them now. There you go. See if you got them all right and let me know if you have any questions. Good job.